everybody, welcome to Prophetic Dateline. Once again. Yes. And, well, we've got a special guest today that we've been just waiting to have on with us. Yes, we can't wait. One of our favorite people in the whole world, our family, Chuck Pierce. Hi, Chuck. We're glad you could join us. Cindy, Mike, you know how I feel about you, but most of all, how you keep the prophetic focus uh, going forth for the kingdom of God. That is what's so amazing. Thank you. Well, you know, we had promised on this show that we'd hear the word of the Lord. And, you know, Chuck has this ability to really see the way forward for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike and I personally really give a lot of credence to what he says. And he's really one of the, the few prophetic voices that I have observed through the years that has the ability to determine times and seasons in terms of dates and stuff. Mm -hmm. but when prophets try to do that, typically they're not as so good at, but you know, they can get the general gist, but he has dates. If he has, gives you a date, you can take it to the bank. Well, sometimes, you know, I, I think it's very interesting because one thing I love about you, Chuck, is you know how to stay in your lane. You're very defined as what God has called you to do, what you know to do. And I love also how uh, through through pictures and understanding uh, uh, the times through even the Hebrew understanding, how uh, you are able to keep us on track. And so we just want to let you go ahead and go because, you know, there's a slide you put up we were looking at before we went live. And I think it's so pertinent today. One of the words that we have received this year, many prophets, is it will be a year of epic spiritual warfare. Oh, great. Thanks. Right. <laughs> but, you know, we would be remiss not to tell you how to stand and, and battle in this season. And so, Chuck, go ahead and just share with us some of the things the Lord has been showing you. I consider it a great honor to be able to do that. And I think for a lot of those people out there, Mike, you and Cindy, of course, we have, we have been together so long, we've learned our gifts. And just as uh, you honored and trust this one, I honor and trust yours. And that is really key for all of you out there that's prophetic. You have to know what uh, vintage point and vantage point you're watching from. See, I believe God is raising up watchmen. Uh, uh, I call it something new for this year. I call it lookout watch, uh, a lookout watchman anointing. And I get that from Isaiah 21 because uh, we are having to uh, see around the corner uh, before we go around the corner. And uh, that's a totally different dynamic that we're in. So we've got to be coupling this prophetic that we have, hearing what people are saying, listening carefully, and then using that to see forward as we move forward. And uh, this is not uh, going to, it's going to be a great year for us, but once we understand it, it's easier for us to flow in it. One of the things the Lord has done with me on timing is when he visited me when I was 18, he revealed himself as the God of Israel. So from that, I always watch Israel. And then I know that uh, his covenant, he gave it to us in Hebrew. Uh, and Abram, Abraham, the Hebrew, is what the Lord says, uh, called Abraham. Hebrew means one who crosses over. So we also know that through the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his blood and his spirit flowing through us, we have the, we're grafted back to Abraham and we have the ability to cross over. But I also know from Acts 17 that he predetermines our time and our place. So faith works out of time and place. Faith in just something that drops in. And it, it's working where he's called you to be and what he's called you to be doing. And that word actually means pro horizon. So it allows us to see all the way to the horizon. So each one of you out there listening today, you have the ability to see further than what you're seeing right now. And uh, I think that is the goal that I find that Mike and Cindy keep us moving forward. They have their 
uh, prophetic council each year, and it helps all of us to see beyond the moment that we're living in. It projects us into a different time frame because God's not in time. We're in time, but he can also lift us beyond time. And so that's what makes us very prophetic people. And I look back and I will say this, uh, Cindy and Mike came here last year before all the shutdown occurred at our starting the year off right. And you've heard me say this, think how drastically my life has changed. And Cindy gave me this wild word. The first week of January, you won't be traveling this year. I traveled 578,000 miles the year before. You won't be traveling this year like that. I went home, my wife was watching it on web, and she said, I told you, and Cindy's word is right, and how God's going to do it. I agree with him that he will do this in your life. Well, that's how you operate operate with the prophetic. I had no idea how God would do what, what Cindy spoke from the Lord to me. And yet I watched him by March. By March, I'd gone 100,000 miles from March all the way to probably when uh, it was probably May before our, no, it was probably June or July before I ever took another flight. So you see how God operates. You have to be watching for the word. So that brings us to understand the era we're in. And I want to show you a picture of that first, then show you the year we're in. And uh, I think that will help us. But I want Mike and Cindy to interact as they watch this, because one thing that we've always done, one thing that I used to do in the early 90s, 1991, I would drive over to Weatherford from here. We would sit and pray all day long, one day a week, and really hear what the Lord was saying. And the interaction and the synergy of our gifts really help us to gain the revelation that we need, which we'll talk about in a moment. Let me put up that first picture on the era. Look at it on what this whole 10 year era. See, we crossed into a new era. Last year, it started at uh, the Hebrew in the Hebrew calendar in September of uh, uh, 2019. We had Rosh Hashanah. This was what this era looks like in Hebrew. This 10 year era is a new era that we've crossed into, and it's in the year 5780, which we'll translate that to our year. In a and it's the era of pay. Well, when you, when you take those numbers and look at it, you get a lot of revelation through the word of God from pay. You, you find out what the era is expecting of, what God is expecting of us in this era. Well, the word ex, uh, really means bread. Now, look at the war we went through starting last year. We started prophesying. This era is about Brent. That was in September before we ever even got to COVID. And so then you see that what God is doing from heaven is blowing through the heavens into the earth ring. Now that's key to understand that. Nations are shifting. Even Psalms 102 says the heavens shift at certain times. The heavens are changed like an old garment. We're in such a changing moment right now that it, we're having to all find our footing in new ways. And so we have the Lord blowing in from heaven and his breath is creating a new sound in us for a whole era ahead. And lots of things are happening. Now, you guys, y'all let us know what you see. You, you, you see. you've been seeing so many changes since last year, and we're in such a changing atmosphere. That's the way you want to think about it. The atmosphere started changing. 
And uh, with that, it produces a new prophetic anointing in all of us. Now, with that, there's three other words linked with pay that is important for us to understand. Chuck? Uh, yeah, Mike, go ahead. The, the slide that we're seeing is a picture that says, come face to face with the roar. Is that the one that you're talking about? That's, the, that's the whole era we're in. The okay, Lord gotcha. will be blowing in on us this whole era. We must understand in this new era that there is so much movement going on that uh, what is what we have to do is find our footing in God's movement. Now, that brings me to you two. You two have kept a movement going. Through the years, I, I, since the uh, late 80s, early 90s, you have kept moving. I have never seen uh, generals uh, ever slow down in not moving in what God was doing. But now this breath of God is creating an incredible acceleration in the move of God. Now, again, I want to remind all of you out there, we're in a kingdom above all kingdoms. And this breath is causing nations to come to the valley of decision. Now, that's very important. And also another word that God gave me out of Isaiah 21 was the valley of decision. It will create the valley of vision. And so with that, vision is changing for everybody. And vision is linked with provision. And vision is linked with how we move forward without a vision, without prophetic utterance. A people go backwards and they are no more. So the prophetic anointing is going to be very strong in this era. The other three words we want to remember linked with pay Pay actually comes from Penuel, where uh, the Lord brought Jacob face to face with him. We're having to reconcile a lot of things in our life. All of you out there, you're having to come face to face with the Lord in a way that we have not been confronted by him in a long time. And even though we seek him, even though we walk in his presence, but he some way is forcing us into a new dimension by his breath ble uh, breathing into the earth realm and is forcing us back. Now, remember in that story, and Mike, you and Cindy might add to this, he brought Jacob back to Penuel, and that's where Jacob had this face-to-face -face meeting with him where his identity started changing. That brings me to this era. God is changing our identity of the future. And I think that was the, the uh, anxious thing I had to get past after Cindy prophesied to me. My identity was going to change. I've been called to the nations. I've gone to so many nations as, as uh, you have gone. And Yet I knew the Lord was giving me a word through Cindy that your identity has to change this year. You yeah. Know. And so, uh, y'all tell me, how's y'all's changing? <laughs> Chuck, but before we do that, uh, because some people may be viewing this on a pretty small screen, and the uh, the and the lower left part of that of that slide, there is. I guess that is the letter pay. That is the letter pay. That is but the number, pay is also the number the 80. The lion. Pay is in the mouth of the lion. Yeah. Graphically. And so what we're seeing here is the lion is roaring forth through the pay. Absolutely. Exactly. The lion, the the lion of, of, of the tribe of Judah must go first. So he's roaring how we will change in this era. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes prophetic ministries like y'all so important for us, because without hearing and each one of us doing our part in this, we lose our way in the midst of the changes. Mm -hmm. And think of when big winds come, the debris can create lots of so much change that 
you can be blinded in the midst of the debris. And really, I think that's what we're going through the first couple of years. And the other three words, pay is linked with Purim, pay is linked with Passover, and pay is linked with Pentecost. So I started studying the word spirit. And when I got to the Aramaic uh, uh, expression of the word spirit, see, Holy Spirit is on the move in this era. So we are coming into a whole new Holy Spirit movement. Now, uh, Cindy and Mike helped push me into, I, I got baptized in the Spirit when, when the Lord visited me when I was 18, but they helped push me into the things of the Spirit in a greater way. We are having to come into a supernatural dimension of understanding the things of the Spirit in a new way. And so this gives you an idea. This is the 10 years that we're in. 10 is linked with us developing our testimony for the future. So right now, whatever you're going through, it is part of your testimony for the future. Now that brings us to this year and what the one that, whether you're in our calendar or whether you're in the Hebrew calendar, you're still in one. See, the, the good thing about the Hebrew calendar is the 80, because eight means new beginning, and it, 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 we started last year a new beginning to develop our testimony, and God is blowing that in on us right now. Now, that's going to bring us to what America is going through in a little while. And you guys, uh, Mike and Cindy will give a perspective, and then I'll try to add to it from what I see the Lord doing in this, this year. Now, let me show you what this year looks like. Remember the lion there blowing. This year, his breath has intensified, and it's fiery. So, Alamo Beef, too, and I, a good friend of ours, all, all of ours, wrote a book called rekindling the altar fire. You know why? Because we've got to be fiery starting this year. When Mike and Cindy was telling us about the intense warfare ahead, we have got to be fiery because this breath is changing the pillars of our operation right there in the middle. But the lion of the tribe of Judah is blowing. We're becoming fiery. Now, what does that mean to us? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder soul and spirit, even piercing down into your bone marrow. He is causing things in your bone marrow to come alive in a new way. He's refiring, as Jeremiah said, uh, the word that's in our bones. I look at generals and all the things that have been prophesied and all the things you've prophesied where it's starting this year, where there's certain things that's going to come alive that have been prophesied, that we're going to have to develop a strategy to complete those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there are nations that we will have to find our way into. Mm -hmm. uh, we're called for the healing of the nations. I remember Cindy writing an article in 1993 and us doing a conference, at Mike and Cindy, uh, in 1994 about the healing of the nation. We are called for the healing of the nations. So this fire has to open up new doors for us. That's just a good example for you into nations where we have not fully accomplished going where God tells us to go. But now look at something else that's going on. This year, we have to face off a dragon because of the new birth that has occurred. So this picture you're looking at looks like the year ahead, and really it's a three-and-a-half-year war uh, between us becoming so fiery because of the line of the tribe of Judah and us causing the dragon to have to retreat. Now, where do I get that? And then I'm going to pause and let them 
lead us into another discussion. But I have been meditating. Uh, we have a good friend, Dutch Sheets, and I, he called me back in October. I said, I'm already in April somewhere. I can't, I, it wouldn't be good for me to be trying to prophesy just about what's going to be happening because I see, I see the war ahead. Now, I don't know why God cho chooses to just show me the war, but thank God I see the line of the tribe of Judah first. The war is intensifying, and with that, I, I have been living in Revelation, tw Revelation 12. Now, that brings me to these points for you if you're taking notes out there. It means a new birth has occurred. We have, there's been a birth in the earth. We have birthed, and we have co-labored with the Lord over the last year and birthed a new movement. But remember in Revelation 12, it says, when this new birth by the woman, the church comes forth, that if you don't hide it right and, and protect it right for three and a half years, the dragon starts moving to try to remove this new birth, this new movement that we're in. So we have new birth, but we have a new war that goes with the new birth. And that's why all the prophets are hearing intense volatile warfare this, in this year as we move in. And with that, but you see as you as we move with the Lord, a new testimony forms, and it's that testimony that overcomes the dragon. And so we as God's people are rising up with a new strength and a new testimony like we've never had. And then this is going to produce our new platform when you start looking at it. See, we all have had big platforms in the past. Cindy and Mike, I started thinking about Washington for Jesus and all those million people that were there and the platform that was there. I thought about all the things Peter led us in as he gathered people around the world. We had great platforms. So I had this dream. And in the midst of the dream, we were doing a big meeting. You two were in it. And as Peter did, he was going to chair the meeting, but he was going to have me administrate and get it in order. And I got to a place and he said, all I'm requiring in this meeting is a, the Star Spangled Banner to be sung. So I knew a friend that I, uh, we were in a quartet in high school. That guy had the most incredible voice. I said, I'll get him. He's a funeral director now. I said, I'll call him from the funeral home and get him to come sing this thing. And so he did. We went through all the practice, all of us, with what we were going to be doing in this schedule the day before. When we got time for this huge meeting that we were doing on this platform, we got to the time for the Star Spangled Banner, and that guy had evaporated. Oh. Therefore, the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> can be sung. And I looked at Peter and I said, uh, we're not going to be able to do the Star Spangled Banner. And then I knew to wake up because I, you know, Peter was not always happy when we didn't do what he knew we needed. <laughs> and, I, and I woke up. And when I woke up, the Lord said, I'm developing a new platform for you. But... I do not have the new platform fully of how you will bring the next level of freedom and authority into America. And I really believe that's sort of where we are. I believe we're in a warfare. I believe we've birthed a new movement. Uh, uh, I believe that we're in this great conflict. And then this new platform is where our new authority will be demonstrated. And that's where we're going to go into the harvest realm because we will see miracles. We will see all the things that God has prophesied, but we're, in, we're going through this process now. And that's sort of how I see it. Can we bring that uh, graphic up that we just had with the lion and, the, and the, uh, the dragon? Because I think there's some real practical things that we could to, uh, take a look at on that 
Chuck, you know, this, this, when you shared in November at our Global Prophetic Summit, this, when you gave this graphic, it really struck me because I had been studying on peace and uh, because that was the word that the Lord gave me was my prophetic input for uh, this coming season and uh, several things. But before I unpack that more, the graphic here shows a lion and a dragon and they look like they're both in the heavens. And one of the things that has been a challenge is we've since November, what we have found is that the voice of the lion is supposed to be a fiery voice that roars, but the battle is done from the heavenly place, from heaven down, not from earth up. And a lot of people are going to really get messed up if they don't understand that the war, even though we're in the earth realm, we war from a heavenly place. And I think one of the greatest examples of that is when the Lord and the disciples were trying to, to cross the, the sea and uh, a great storm came up. Uh, and then the disciples were fearful for their lives even. That this was something new. And the Lord, when he was awakened, you know, spoke peace to the storm. Okay, that, that is the Greek word siopa. And it means to silence the voice of the enemy because the enemy in this season as you know chuck is doing everything he can to shut Probably. down the voice of the people of god so that's a lot of where our warfare is but uh and cindy talks about this frequently that the war that we do must take place from heaven down we pray heaven down we don't pray heaven from earth up we pray from heaven down, so. You know, Mike, we're back to y'all's book, Possess the book Cindy wrote that affected all the world when she wrote it, Possessing the Gates of the Enemy. We're having to understand that, first of all, the gates are coming from heaven to earth, not from earth to heaven. We, we want to see these gates and earth affected. We want to see the gatekeepers affected. The new watchman anointing has to be announced to the gatekeepers in the earth, but we're in this warfare to bring down the revelation that is necessary to announce that. So we're back to that book, and then I wrote more of the book of the earth called Possess uh, uh, Possessing Your Inheritance. So those two books we come back to now with a lot of people that really don't understand these some of these principles and we're saying, Lord, there's a divine return back to this place that you're calling us right now so that we don't get discouraged and we keep going forth in our call to triumph here in the earth realm. But we first have to triumph in the throne room. And that's why, again, John Dixon and I wrote the book, uh, worship warrior ascending in worship and getting in the presence before we go to war. And mm -hmm. so you guys are, you keep leading us correctly as we're moving forward. But I will tell you, it's pretty intense out there. <laughs> it and, is pretty intense out there. You know, and you're um, out there more than me. So tell us <laughs> how you're seeing. Yeah, but Chuck, what we're seeing out there is an absolute amazing display of the glory of God. Yeah. I'll let Cindy speak to that because yeah. everywhere we're going, we're seeing some things springing up that have been prophesied. And uh, it the passion that we're seeing in the next generation, the passion for the Lord is is really outstanding. Yeah. You know, yes, it is. And, and it's like when we go, it's just a revival anointing. Yeah. The power of God, the fire of God. Well, you had that you. here. Y'all had that here when you came here. <laughs> we had a wonderful time I with you. It. Now, let, <clears throat> let me share something. Um, Purim is coming up. And, you know, some of us uh, are concerned about our future. And the Lord just really spoke something to me. And I don't know how you'll lead it. And I know our time frame is very short, but Purim this year is very important. And Purim is a time of giving gifts. And I don't know if you're doing a Purim celebration. We have, we just went over it this morning. See how prophetic she is. 
the Lord used her to clip my wings, keep me <laughs> home, and now I'm I, I've redone a whole two hundred sixty eight thousand foot building here since she since the Lord prophesied that through her. But we're doing a huge illuminate, you know, which reaches out in the community here, and we have four hundred students from around the community from the schools that come here during the week to learn dance and to learn music music and things like that we we co-labor with the schools mm -hmm. that they are presenting our purim uh uh celebration this year saturday night before purim the end of february we'll be having this celebration we're making it so people understand the joy see purim in israel is sort of like our, our halloween people dress up and Yet Purim is a God-given celebration so that we celebrate freedom ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's and freedom and favor ahead. And so mm -hmm. yeah, we're doing we this year, we have not done this in several years, are doing a big Purim fun gathering on Saturday night. Then of course we'll have our service, celebration service on Sunday morning. So Purim becomes very important. And why that is, Cindy, I think you're hearing that is because Esther had to know how, but see, once a decree is made, you can't just all of a sudden pray it away. Yeah. And I think the body's a little naive in that, uh, you guys. I, I think I've listened this past year and certain things just can't be prayed away. Esther had to risk her life, go before the king, gain favor, and then have this big party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after she did that, her favor started overthrowing the enemy. But that was a long process. Mm -hmm. The king said, I just can't reverse the decree. You're going to have to go to war and overthrow it. Haman had 10 sons. And it became a long process of really one by one overthrowing the structure that would take out God's kingdom plan. I really think that's where we are. Mm -hmm. I, think, yeah. I, don't, I think the next 10 months, starting at Purim, becomes a real key. Uh, we have to get into different levels of intercession to overthrow certain things that that will be contrary to the kingdom of God plan. Now, I believe the book of Esther is a focus for us right now, Chuck. And that, that I mean, I just could see God giving you this revelation on prayer. And prayer was a time of giving gifts too. It's time of celebrating, Absolutely. a time of sowing. So we're going to be thinking of Purim gifts that we want to give and that'll help for the next season. Now, let me say this, when Esther was put in as queen, you know, it, that was a victory. You know, I, it was totally. incredible. A Jewish orphan, you know, was now the queen of the nation. Well, sometimes we reach that point governmentally where everything looks great, but yet it's for a future season. And we can't always understand that future season. We can't get caught in that last season and not understand how to move into the new season. And I think that there are parallels for us right now. I mean, the, the church, we're, we're under persecution right now. You know, there's, there's a lot of things. I just heard that James Dobson was uh, uh, banned on Twitter, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of things happening and we can't do things the way we were, but God began to unfold the strategy how to not only take out Haman, but all his sons. And so I want to say, so that, key. yeah, so you're, I see this, Chuck, I see glory of Zion and I see you and I see this, this something turning in the spirit where people celebrate but get great courage to be an Esther, to be a Mordecai, to be those who who uh, go into the future for the whole nation and for your nations. And so we've got to understand this. This is so key, what you're saying, because I noticed something in this past election, that which has been a, a, one of our wildest elections, that, we've, that we went through. 
I, I would hear about two men. Well, that isn't exactly what we need right now. We need to find our Mordecais at the gate. We need to find the Esther. We need to start asking the Lord, you raise up an Esther and you get her in place. You keep her hidden as long as she needs to be hidden. You, you, move, you can move us in to gaining our freedom for the future because a lot of people are so devastated they don't think we even have a strategy for freedom for the future. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. God always has a plan B. He mm -hmm. always has a plan to raise it up into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see that. But, but right, let me let me just interject yeah. something here because this the it's it's interesting to watch how people are getting all messed up because they are they're so focused on the circumstances in the earth realm. And they're not understanding that circumstances in the earth realm are not the circumstances in heaven. And if you try to war from the circumstances on earth, you will not be successful. You're gonna get all perplexed. You may get taken out because you're not made to deal with the circumstances of earth from earth. You're meant to deal with the circumstances of earth from a heavenly perspective. That's why the prophetic revelatory voice is so important right now, Chuck. If we don't have that revelation that comes, it says, here's how you deal with those circumstances. You don't deal with them from the earth realm. You deal with them from the heavenly realm. And if we can, if we can get that understanding, then people will be able to move forward as we move into this war. And, yeah. and I would go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, I was just going to say, so this is what is happening. The Haman, Haman is threatening, and it looks like Haman is in ascendancy. Well, and we could put Haman on that dragon. We could name the dragon Haman. <laughs> <laughs> you could. He's, he's a typology. Of yeah. Uh -huh. Well, even we won't, uh, I won't talk about China right now, but China is rising with that dragon rising spirit. Quickly. There's going to be, there's going to be a clashes, whether we will stand up for Taiwan or whether, um, or, or whether we, uh, uh, our president now will be like Chamberlain and Southeast Asia start getting Absolutely. gobbled up, you know, but let me speak to the people. God, God sees that Haman seems to be in favor and in ascendancy, you know, whoever that might be, wherever your nation is, okay, there are situations, it looks like this, or maybe in your family, but God has Esther and Mordecai, Mordecai or Mordecai, you know, it's different people say it different ways, but but there is something symbiotic that God is going to raise up in relationships. And these relationships are going to bring great deliverance in the future. So focus on your relationships. Don't that get is pushed so off. key. Yeah, Here don't get pushed off. You. Yeah. I mean, that is one of the points. There are several points for us to understand. And, and we, will, uh, we will address that China thing. You know, I, I wrote Cindy, uh, sent Cindy a text this past week because CNN reported that China was predicted to become the strongest economic uh, 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 ruling force in the world by 2030. But because of COVID, it would now be more like 2026 that they would rule the world. In 1986, I've written three books on that. And I told Cindy, I said, I, it is hard for me to believe that the Lord showed me in 1986, and it is published that by 2026, China is the ruling force that we're having to deal with. Now, does that mean that we're in total submission to that? Absolutely not. Does that mean that that is the will of God? No, notice how the enemy used COVID to change time to accelerate what was happening. And so what that says to me, we've got this counteraction of the spirit that's going on right now to start decreeing people to be in place, to decreeing our relationships to be strong, to decree that a prophetic portal remain open over us so we do not lose sight of what God is doing. And, and I, think, I think the election, there was such a war, and, and I do want us to look at that for a moment. 
I even, Dutch and I had a conversation because I could never see Mr. Trump in office uh, beyond three years that he had influence. Well, in the fourth year of his, of his term, they, uh, the structure, the enemy structure started trying every way to pull out a lot of the reform. And you have to remember, it's against the church. We're not talking about just nation control. The enemy of our soul is against what we represent in the earth realm as God's ruling force. So he was so pro-church, Mr. Trump, that the enemy had to rise up some way and try to get that out of place or else the church was going to have such freedom and, and was going to advance so quickly into uh, our next place. And so we saw that war start at the end of his third term. Now, with that, and we saw it escalate because in October 11, 2018, the Lord said, you will be in a swamp in this nation. Now, if you're listening from another nation, you have to know that the political realm of your nation is important. In the day that G uh, Caesar decreed uh, made a decree as the government, it forced Mary and Joseph to go to Bethlehem to fulfill prophecy. We, what we're doing right now, are finding, is finding the way to fulfill the prophecies to bring us into a new place of freedom and redemption. Yet the same thing happened with, with Yeshua. They had to hide him for two years because of Herod. Now, we're in a, a more of a strategic time, and we're going to have to, you know, the Lord's going to force us to come into unity, whether we like each other or don't like each other. And he's going to force us to honor each other's gifts so we get clarity of how we're moving forward. And so this becomes really important for us as we advance into the season ahead we're going to probably have to have more uh, uh, shows like this that you guys have to host for month to month to say, here's the strategy that we're hearing. Here's mm -hmm. how we need to move. And mm -hmm. get out the word because Esther couldn't just all of a sudden say, I've over, I've thrown Haman down. She then had to take the, what, the king sent her to do was then overthrow every structure in days ahead that was going to rise up again against the move of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I really believe that's where we are. I, I, don't, I don't see that it is just about the political environment of what has occurred in this nation. If you're looking at America and I got a, I got a, a, uh, a letter from China yesterday saying we're ha we're praying more for America than we are China, and I really think that's the way the intercession of the world is going. And take Taiwan for instance, you men mentioned that is an apostolic nation right in the center of all of that sea right there. That is like the hub, the turning hub. So how Taiwan goes is how there's this great movement that comes in and through Asia. We are in a different type of war than we have ever, ever been in. And I'm, I think I'm real excited about it. And I, yet I don't, I know that it's going to take us doing, Mike, what you said, staying ascended in the heavens so we know how to go to war in the earth realm. Yeah, you know, let me give a practical example, Chuck, from, from our lives, from Cindy and me, uh, because one of the things that, that we just saw was someone, it appeared that someone was taken out of their placement successfully by the enemy. And, you know, when I was working for the airlines, uh, I've always been a dreamer. And there were times when Satan would try to use someone that I was under the authority of to get me out of the position that God had me in. And I knew that I was supposed to be there. And the way that the Lord would 
tip me off that this was getting ready to happen, he would give me a tornado dream. And in these tornado dreams, uh, when I would have one of those, I'd go to Cindy and say, Cindy, I had a tornado dream. And she said, okay, then we need to go to prayer because we know that from what the Lord had, had revealed, the enemy's going to try to get you out of your placement. Yeah, there were five tornadoes too, in one too, dream. Yeah, that too, was many, too many, too <laughs> many. So what would happen is we would go to war in the spirit. Again, not from the circumstances. We would go to war in the spirit. And in every case, uh, I would get either a lateral with an increase in pay or a promotion with an increase in pay and my boss would get fired. Yeah. And so I, I got everything that people. I tried to do with dealing with it from the earth realm. We dealt with it from the spiritual realm. And the thing that was most difficult, Chuck, was when it came time for the Lord to move me to a new place, he still used or allowed the same tornado attack but this time he said, don't fight it. Most difficult time in my career because we were so used to dealing with the enemy in the way that had been successful in the past. It was almost like, hey, this is not going to be a big deal. We'll just go to prayer and, you know, I'm going to, I can see a new, a new position an increase in pain. The Lord said, do not fight it this time because what he was trying to do was transition me from the airline environment into what became Generals International. Absolutely. And if I had fought, you know, I might have won, but I would be disobeying God and we would not have, we would not be where we are today if we had not made that transition. So it could very well be that the United States is in one of those types of positions Sounds right like now. It. it could be that the Lord is saying, do not get, do not fight this in the way that you have fought it in the past successfully. Let me move you into this new era that the prophets have been saying we're entering into a new era. And, and, and when you look back down the road, you'll say, oh, now I understand why the Lord allowed that to happen because we wouldn't be where we are today if I had fought a battle like I had in the past. We wouldn't be where we are today. That what you're saying is what I saw some as we moved forward in this last uh, season. And the Lord showed me the principle of that is in the Word of God, Mike, 2 Samuel chapter 5, where the, where the Philistines hear of David's anointing once he becomes king, and they attack him because they've got to get rid of that anointing. I think we've been through that. And then he pushes them back, but they regroup, and the Lord tells them, don't go up against them the same way. Yeah. You have to wait till you hear the wind, the angelic activity, and the spiritual activity coming through the mulberry trees before you come around and hit it. We're in a place of listening for the march wind. Now, that's a good yes. word for all of you out there. We are in a place, we're listening for a march wind that will set us toward Passover now. Uh, and I, I feel like y'all need to be getting your Passover message. Passover is not just an event. It's just not Easter. It's just not what we're used to. We, every year of this decade, will have a major crossing over moment where we go into the next portion of our land. And uh, here's, the, here's the key thing about that. See, the Lord said, somebody said, well, where are we if we're coming out of the swamp? I said, we're coming out of the swamp into the land of giants. Well, but remember the land of giants was where the promise was. The land of giants, were, the giants were meant to be their food. We have to know the Lord has put us on an acceleration mode to move forward and advance and not back up. And yet we're having to walk in ways that I don't know that we all thought we would be walking. And I know this, and this is what I've always seen with you two. Whatever situation we're in, you have to reach up and find the faith dimension mm -hmm. that God is requiring of you. Because if you came to earth today, 
his question is, would I find faith? I've always watched that with generals. No matter what you've gone through, you have found the faith element that is necessary to push you through. That's where we're at right now. And people, all of you listening out there, I decree right now that you will hear faith. You'll find faith. You'll see faith. You will enter into this new place of faith that the Lord is requiring for us because we're going to make it, but we're going to, and I've got to go back to Cindy's word. One of the very first things this year is corporate alignment. We're going to have to stay aligned properly and our gifts are going to have to synergize and we're going to have to have that portal of revelation that's keeping us moving forward. And I believe all of you watching this, we want to help us keep moving forward any way we can through what we represent in the body of Christ. Amen. Well, you know, Chuck, I think I'd like to show, do you have any of your books, a slide on your books? Yeah, like uh, let me show you. We've got this book special that is so key for us right now because during COVID, since Cindy made me stay home, uh, I keep saying that because that was the biggest shock of my life. Uh, somebody said, how did you, how did you change? I said, I got in my back. I, I had never really sat in my backyard. Well, my wife is a horticulture. She is, has designed the most incredible garden. When I would come back from a trip, I'd go to the garden here. But our backyard is incredible. So I said, all right, Lord. Starting in March, when we shut down, I said, start me over. Let me work out from my backyard to where you need me to be. I want to encourage you. God will work you into your new boundaries. He will work you into your new sphere. He will develop your new platform. During that time, I wrote one book called Passover Prophecies. This helps us to cross over, and it does explain the China element and its influence on America that is coming. Now, uh, again, I want you to understand, Mr. Trump pushed back that influence. I don't know that that influence now is being pushed back. So I do know there can be an acceleration of our identity as a nation looking more like China, a time to triumph is such a good book. And then Robert Highland and I wrote a book called A Triumphant Kingdom that explains the change that's going on from church to kingdom. Alamu and I wrote this book, Rekindle the Altar Fire. And then one of my favorite books is, you know, God has a different plan when something goes wrong. It's just what Mike and Cindy have been saying to us. He will redeem the time. Pam's favorite scripture is walk circumspectly, walk watchfully and redeem the time. He's already bought back our triumph. We just have to find our footsteps into it because days are evil. Now that's in the book of Ephesians, and that is an important scripture for us. We're just trying to give you any five books on our website for $50. If you'll even say that you are on this broadcast, we'll pay the postage so you get up. Wow. I want I want you to be encouraged. You need to be able to pick a book up, read a chapter and say, this is helping me understand the times we're in right now. Mm -hmm. and, I, and notice how you get it. It's up on the screen, store.gloryofzion.org. Yeah. And can... so just do that because this is so special. And and if you don't understand where you are in your season, it's up to you to study and find out where that is. And the Lord wants to teach us right now how to particularly do that on an individual basis and then on a collective basis. Yeah, and Cindy, it's real interesting because when, when you read the testimonies in, in books like that Cindy has written or Chuck has written, as you read them, uh, you know, what we have learned from our friends in Latin America is when they see a good testimony or they see a good prophetic word, they have this phrase, me gusta es mio. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's mine. <laughs> so what you will see, that's I mean, key. You read these things. God's going to begin to 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 probe you a bit, and you're going to go, "Ooh, I like that. I want that." And the Lord's saying, "Well, just ask. 
Any final words, Jack? Well, uh, my final word is we bless Generals International and we say you will not slow down. You will advance. You keep moving. And all of you out there, you will not be overtaken. You're connected. We're, we're in this thing together. Always write us. Always share with us what's going on. Give in to people that can help you advance. So, Father, I bless this ministry. I bless our time. And I say, hearing our ears. And, Father, I ask you for one thing. Keep the portal of revelation open over us. Have us know what you're saying as we seek you. I love you guys. Love you. Thank you. Bless Bye. You. Bless you.